our meeting tonight. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your power, the power in the Holy Ghost, keeping us on and making us to feed into your plan for this day, for this period. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your strength will always abide in us to do your will and to prepare your people for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, will not be tired, will not be weary, and will not stop in the middle of the way before the end of our journey in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to be faithful at all times, in all things, in readiness for the coming of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. I welcome you tonight to our leadership development uh, session. And tonight we are talking about the rapture. We are reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery, and we shall, we shall all, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In verse 52, it says that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. It's talking about the time of the rapture. And Paul, the apostle writing by the inspiration of the Spirit of God, said, We. Which means that he didn't know when it will happen, whether it will happen at his own lifetime or not. But he knew that that rapture will take place and it will take place anytime. If the Apostle Paul and if those in the early church thought it could happen any time and they so wrote to the believers that we should be ready and that we shall all be changed and we shall all be transformed and then the incorruptible will come to the corruptible and then says because of that look at what we need to do and look at how we need to prepare ourselves it tells us in verse 58 in verse 58 it says therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast therefore because we shall be changed therefore because the rapture is coming therefore because we shall be translated therefore because it will happen anytime and we need to be ready it says therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast or movable always abounding in the work of the lord always abounding so that when the lord comes if it co if he comes when you are still alive he'll find you abounding in the work of the lord you will not say you want to retire you want to retreat you want to move back you want to slow down because after all now you see old age is coming and this situation is coming i don't understand this i don't understand that it says in view of the rapture in the light of the fact that the rapture will happen take place anytime therefore you know that anytime you say the word therefore it means because of this because of this situation and because of this possibility therefore this is what you do my beloved brethren be ye steadfast or movable or movable what moves us? You know, when the wind is blowing, it moves the trees. It says the wind might blow and the storm might come. You know, when you push something, you move that thing. Uh, people might push you and situations might push you. And you might say, I cannot go to the direction I want to go because I am being moved by a force, an extra force, external force out of myself. It says, whatever is pulling and whatever is pushing, whatever is pressing and whatever is driving and whatever wind may blow and whatever storm become be 
unmovable. That means then there is a power in you. There is a, a stabilizing might in you that will make you immovable. That means somebody within you, something within you is greater than any force outside you. So that you can be unmovable if you are moved, if you are jolted, if you are driven from here to here, if you cannot keep on your straight path, it means the outside force, the outside power is greater than the strength inside you. But it says, in the light of the rapture, in the light of what will happen, in the light of the fact that Christ will come at any time, have the greater one inside you, have the greater power inside you that will be unmovable, always abounding. Think about that. It says, any time uh, you feel, I think I, know, I need to relax now. I need to retreat now. I think this situation is not favorable. And therefore, I need to step aside at this time. It says, always, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In the work of the Lord. You are not taking time out for the work of the world for the work in this generation for the work in your community what you are committed to and what you give yourselves to is the work of the lord for as much as she know as much as she know always know that every time any little thing you do for the glory of god as much as she know any big thing you do for the glory of God as much as she know. Any challenge you take up because of the glory of God as much as she know. As much as she know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It says your labor is not in vain. And because of that, you can and you should prepare for the rapture by keeping on in the work of the Lord. Look at first. Thessalonians chapter 4. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 13. It says in verse 13, it's telling us about what we need to do. It gives us the certainty of the rapture, the assurance of the rapture, the very fact that the rapture is a definite event that is going to take place. And it gives us the assurance, it tells us even how it will happen, how the dead in Christ shall rise forth and those of us who are alive will not precede them, will not prevent them, will not hinder them that are asleep when that trumpet sounds after they have reached the inner and they're going up, then we which are alive will join them in the air this is not talking about the second coming of the Lord, the second coming of the Lord will still come after the great tribulation but before the great tribulation we have the rapture and then after the rapture we have great tribulation of seven years and then the lord will come with the saints at the time of the rapture is coming for the saints that's why it says in first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which which have no hope. The people that do not know about the rapture, they think whatever is happening to them in this world is the final thing. Whatever the devil can throw at them, that's the final thing. And when, you know, death has taken place in their community, they think that's the final thing. They do not understand the life after death is much, much longer than the life before death. They do not understand that when we get to the other side of the grave life really begins and is going to be forever and ever because they do not understand that they live as if there were no hope they think as if there were no hope. they throw out their hands as if there were no hope and then they are dejected they are depressed they are oppressed and they say what can we do life is miserable and paul the apostle says by the spirit i do not want any believer any child 
child of God, he calls us brethren. He says concerning them which are asleep, those who have died already, that ye should sorrow not, even as those that have no hope. You know, sometimes when people have died, 10 years after they have died, the people are still sorrowful. And then 15 years, 20 years after they have died, because they do not have hope. But in the case of the children of God, we have hope and your hope will abide in Jesus' name. And then he now talks in verse 14, he says in verse 14, for if we believe, that's the condition, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, what did he say that? He's saying, I've called you brethren in verse 13. How did you become a brother? How, do, how did you become a sister? If you believe in your heart that Christ died and he rose again and you confess his resurrection to be the source of your salvation and your redemption, he says, then you are saved. That's in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And now it says, if you really believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And then it says in verse 15, in verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we, look at this, is counting himself, we is counting Peter, we is counting counting the apostles that were alive at that time we is counting timothy and titus we it says we which are alive which are alive at this time every generation should understand that the rapture could happen at the time of that generation being alive that's why it says we which are alive it says and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent shall not precede shall not hinder them which are asleep and then it says in verse 16 in verse 16 for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Look at that. The dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ. They believed in the Lord. They were children of God. They had the grace of God in their lives. They profess and possess the salvation of the Lord at the time they were alive. And when Christ will come at the rapture, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now in verse 17, and then we which are alive. He repeats that again. Now Paul the apostle said we. He said we like Timothy, like Titus, like Epaphroditus, like all the companions, like all the believers at, Thessal at Thessalonica. He said, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. That is what them who have died and they are now risen. He said, we're not going to hinder them. We're not going to prevent them. He was writing as if the rapture could take place at his own time. You say, why did he write like that? Because nobody knows the day or the time or the hour when the rapture will take place. And that is the concept we ought to have. That's the understanding we ought to have. What's the last thing I want to find uh, Christ shall find me doing uh, when he comes? If I know the Lord will come at any time uh, when I'm alone, when no other believer is with me, when the devil is saying now you are free, you can do whatever you want to do and you can act anyhow because nobody will see you. The thought of the believer is the rapture could take place anytime. We which are alive. What do I want Christ to find me doing when he comes? If I find myself in a, at a crossroad, if I find myself in some difficult situation, and then the tendency and the temptation is to compromise, is to yield to temptation, is to fall into sin. If I find myself among unbelievers in the place of work, I find myself among unbelievers in my family, my extended family, and then the challenge is coming, the pressure is coming, this 
is what you do. Don't tell us you are a Christian. Don't tell us you are deep alive. This is what you must do. If I find myself in frustration, if I find myself in discouragement, and then the devil is whispering at this time of discouragement now, are you going to continue consistently like you used to do? I must remember that the rapture could take place at any time and because of that understanding because of that revelation because of that knowledge i would say i don't know what is the last thing i'll be doing when christ will come because he can come anytime maybe you are sick and as you are sick uh, you know you have prayed and the lord wants to examine your faith and he wants to test your faith and he has not healed you instantaneously immediately and then the people your people they are saying look at this now after all your church has prayed after all this has happened and then you are still standing like that we know a place where can carry you to and they want to carry you to a place of occultism a place of evil power a place of satanic domi domination and then you say what can i do now i'm so, so sick i'm suffering the pain the pain you will suffer after death if you go to the wrong side will be much much greater it will be for eternity if you yield at that time i don't know the last sickness i may be having when christ will come my soul must be prepared my spirit must be prepared that's why the apostle said whatever we're going through they may even stone us whatever we're going through they may put whips on us whatever we're going through challenges may come that we cannot unravel we cannot understand then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air when you meet the lord in the air it will pay for everything you have gone through all the oppression all the temptation all the the trial of the difficulties when you meet the Lord a minute of the Lord five minutes of the Lord on the other side when you are going to be with the Lord will pay for anything you have ever suffered you will forget everything it says we'll meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord so shall we ever be with the Lord and then he says in verse 18 he says wherefore comfort one another with these words he tells us in Luke chapter 21 reading from verse 33 Luke chapter 21 I'm reading from verse 33 here is the Lord Jesus talking about what he had said and that everything he has said about the life we ought to live and about the time of his coming and about the rapture and about the great tribulation after that and about he coming with the clouds of heaven in the glory coming from glory everything he has said he said in Luke chapter 21 verse 33 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away heaven and earth shall pass away it is easy for the sun uh, to stop shining it is easy for the moon to, to get out of existence than for any word any sentence any prophecy any promise of the word of God from Christ to, to become and all heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away and then in verse 34 he tells us and take heed to yourselves and take Take it yourself. Temptation can come from yourself, from the flesh. Take it yourself. Temptation can come from your thoughts. Take it yourself. All those challenges can bring confusion and then you can be destabilized in yourself. Take it yourself. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness. Uh, well, uh, believers don't drink, but you know, you can take some substance can make that can intoxicate you. An idea can intoxicate you. Opinion can intoxicate you. And the things, maybe you've got something new now you've not got before. Even marriage can intoxicate you. And then having a child, my child, my child, my child, all that can intoxicate you like you are drunk. And the Lord is saying in view, in the light of his coming again take it to yourselves lest at any time a 
at any time, at any time, your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that day, the day of his coming, so that day come upon you unawares. And then in verse 35, it says, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. It will come to them suddenly. It will come to them unexpectedly. And because they were not preparing and they were not getting ready for the coming of the Lord, it will come to them as a snare. In verse 36, it now says, And what she therefore because it will come at any time watch it therefore and what you are watching every time you are watching every moment watch it therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man let's talk about the rapture that you will escape the tribulation to come you will escape all the dangers to come and you will stand before the son of man today we're looking at the message daily readiness for the rapture of the saints daily readiness for the rapture of the saints and we're taking three uh, instances of the rapture the one for enoch the one for Elijah and the one for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to see how we need to prepare, how we need to be ready, how we need to get ourselves always ready, every day ready, night at, the, at night we're ready, in the day we're ready, every time we don't forget ourselves that we ought to be ready every day for the rapture of the saints. Understand? It's not the rapture of the sinners, the rapture of the saints. Understand? It's not the rapture of the regular church, of the nominal church, of the religious church. It's the rapture of the militant church, triumphant church, the righteous church that is made the bride of Christ. Three things we're looking at. Number one, living righteously and walking consistently with God. Living righteously and walking consistently with God. Number two, like preaching, restoring and walking courageously by His grace. And then number three, we're looking responsibly. There are people that look at something but they are irresponsible there are people that can look at an event they just look casually they look carelessly but we're not talking about we look and because of that we're responsible and we act responsible looking responsibly and witnessing compassionately with the gospel we come to number one number one is living righteously and walking consistently with god we're coming to the uh, event the case that happened to enoch let's look at genesis chapter 5 we're reading from verse 22 genesis chapter 5 verse 22 and enoch walked with god after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Enoch was married and yet he walked with God. We don't know about the wife, whether the wife was a believer or not, but obviously she wasn't at the same spiritual level as Enoch. Otherwise, the Lord would have taken them. He had sons and daughters. The sons and daughters did not dot every I and cross every T. They thought that um, uh, their father was eccentric. They thought that their father had gone beyond the moon. They thought that their father had carried religion too far, had carried holiness too far, had carried uh, faithfulness to God too far. They were not raptured, but Enoch 
walk in spite of the wife in spite of the sons and the daughters he walked with God he walked with God and look at verse 24 in verse 24 he tells us and Enoch walked with God that's emphasized again he walked with God and he was not for God took him he was not for God took him there were people in the old covenant there were people in the old testament that experienced the great experiences and the coming experiences of the new covenant you see the rapture is meant for the church those who died in christ they'll be they'll be raised up and those who are still alive and remain in christ they'll be caught up it's for the church and yet enoch experienced that before the time of moses and before the time of the prophets and before the time of the kings in the case of enoch he had no words he had no doctrine and he had no revelation of the rapture all the revelation he had was the revelation god had given to adam and eve that because you have eaten of that fruit of the tree surely you will die does thou art and does thou shall be shall return to and that's all he had and yet he so walked with god and without prophecy without promise and without any proclamation of the rapture he experienced the rapture how about those of us who have the promise of the rapture the prophecy of the rapture and the possibility of the rapture if enoch went through that how much more today for the children of god and let's look at three things here number one the expectant faith that continually pleases god expectant faith that continually pleases god number two exceptional faithfulness in consistent pilgrimage with god walking with god pilgrimage with god and exemplary fearlessness courageously preaching for God. Number one, what's, going, what's he going to take for us to be ready and for us to be prepared for the rapture? It's going to take number one, faith, expectant faith that continually pleases God. We're told in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, we're looking at verse 5. In Hebrews 11 verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated by faith Enoch was translated at his own time all the communication of God with him he believed all the words of God he could hear he believed he didn't look at his own environment you know chapter 5 of the Genesis is just one chapter before chapter 6 and chapter 6 tells us the whole world was corrupt they were all violent and they were all going uh, the down the drain uh, because they were evil their actions were evil their lives were evil violence was the order of the day but Enoch looked away from that and Enoch believed God and Enoch walked by faith the faith that saves the faith that forgives and the faith that cleanses and the faith that cleanses a man from all the corruption of the things of the world and the faith that lives according to the word of God that Enoch by faith he was translated that he should not see death he should not taste death he should not experience death and was not found because God had translated him because God had taken him away and then he says for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God heaven gave testimony concerning Enoch he pleased God the angels gave testimony he pleased God and those who could see him the almighty God who could see him in every corner 
behind any closed door and behind any curtain and behind that could see his thought that could see his life god bore witness to him that he pleases the almighty and then even uh, you know people at home his wife may not agree with you know his son compromise since time and yet the wife said this man whatever you do i'm, 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 I'm much you taunt him or test him or tempt him he is for pleasing god the people around uh, who for 300 years that's a long time 300 years watching him and going behind him and looking at everything he did they had this testimony that he pleased god he will not please self he will not please the flesh he will not please the community he will not please anyone that is not satisfied with his religious and righteous stand. that's what it takes to make the rapture that we so have the faith in God, we have the faith in the Lord that we're going to walk by faith, we're going to live by faith. Others may agree, others may not agree, they may persecute and they may oppose and they may criticize and there may be more problems just because you make up your mind, you're going to place the Lord. The faith that gets ready for the rapture is the faith that places God every time walking by faith. It's Second Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 6. Therefore, we're always confident, knowing that once we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. In verse 7, it talks about how this is going to happen, but we walk by faith. We we'll walk by faith. We're not walking by sight. We we'll walk by faith. We're not walking by unbelief. We we'll walk by faith. We're not walking by the opinions of men. We we'll walk by faith. We're not walking under pressure. We we'll walk by faith. We're not walking under the system of the world. We we'll walk by faith. We're not walking in fear. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And then in verse 8, in verse 8, it says, We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We're willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. You see Paul the Apostle, he said the rapture may happen anytime and we which are alive, we shall be cut off. But he said maybe you will also die because it says we may become absent from the body. That is our spirit may leave the body and we may die but our spirit will go immediately and be present with the Lord. But if we're going to be present with the Lord either we go by death or we go by the rapture it's going to take faith and this is the kind of faith in the new covenant now he tells us in Galatians chapter 2 reading from verse Verse 20, Galatians chapter 5, chapter 2, chapter 2, reading from verse 20, he tells us, I am crucified with Christ. Why? Because I'm getting ready for the rapture. Nevertheless, I labor, yet not I, but I not allow my personal private opinion to take hold of me and to control my life and to have the better part of me, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I'm still in the flesh, my spirit, my soul is still under this breath. And then the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me he loved me and he gave himself for me and therefore we're living by faith and we're walking righteously by faith number one is the expectant faith that continually places God number two exceptional faithfulness in, uh, in, uh, in consistent pilgrimage with God faithfulness in continually walking with God in Micah chapter chapter uh, Micah chapter 6 we're reading from verse 8 Micah chapter 6 verse 8 it says he has showed thee O man he showed the Enoch and Enoch said that's what I need to do 
God has spoken, let the rest of the world keep silent. There yeah, should be, oh man, you are a man of God, you are a woman of God. That should be your attitude, the attitude of Enoch. God has spoken, let all the earth keep silence before him. There yeah, should be, oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God and to walk humbly with thy God. You understand? You don't have any strength of your own. I'm walking with God. He supplies the strength. You don't have any ability on your own. I'm walking with God. You are humble. He supplies the ability. I do not have any vision of my own. You are humble. You are taking the revelation from Him. You are walking humbly with thy God. It is that consistent walking with the Lord that he expects of us and it is that that will help us to be at ready, to be ready at the time of that rapture. It tells us in Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4, it says thou hast a few names even in studies which have not defiled their garments. Thou hast a few names, even in studies, that have not defiled their garments. You know, it's not every physical member of every local church that will make it at the rapture. Only the people, they hear the word of God, they, they take the time to pray that word in, and they take the time to get themselves consecrated and yielded to the Lord again. They are not saying, I'm a member of the church, whether you have a name that you live or thou art dead, I don't worry about that, but I'm attending the services, I'm there all the time, and I give in to all the doctrines and everything they say, whether your heart is loving God totally and completely entirely or not but you know these those who are going to make it that the people who have not defiled their garments they go to the world but they say I'm going to watch I'll not be defiled they see the things going on in the world I'm going to take care I will not defile myself opposite sex man woman will get near them I will not defile myself there is dirty money and blood money coming I will not defile myself the satanic idea project and program that is coming if you get into this it will give you that I will not defile myself and then the character of the world the characteristics of the world wanting to impose themselves on the man or the woman I will not defile myself those are the people who are walking with God righteously with God and they're not going to yield to the pressures of the world that was in name that thou hast, thou hast a few names even in studies which have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white if you are walking with the lord in righteousness here yeah, then you'll take place you'll take part in the rapture and you'll walk with him in white but they are worthy. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed by a white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Those are the people I pray you'll be among the number in Jesus' name. Number three, exemplary fearlessness, courageously preaching for God. Exemplary fearlessness, courageously preaching for God. We're looking at Jude now. In Jude, only one chapter, we're looking at verse 14. Jude chapter 1, verse 14, and Enoch also which Enoch, the same Enoch we read about in Genesis chapter 5, the servant from Adam, he prophesied, he preached, he proclaimed, he prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. You say that's the rapture. No, that's not the rapture. That's the second coming of Christ. He comes with 
thousands of his saints. At the rapture, he comes for the saints. But at the second coming, you see the, the saints of God, they are being with the Lord from the time of the rapture. And then those seven years of the great tribulation here on earth, the saints are with the Lord. And when he's coming back after the great tribulation and he comes in clouds of glory, he'll be coming with the, the thousands of his saints. He says, behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Now when you see 10,000 there, in the, in the Greek language, Greek understanding, they are numbering, you know, went to the highest, and the highest is 10,000. And so when he say 10,000, he's talking about the highest in multiplied fold, and he's talking about myriads of each of the saints of God. The Lord cometh with the uncountable number of the saints of God. What's he coming to do? Look at verse 15. Here is what Enoch said. Enoch affirmed that the Lord is going to judge. Enoch affirmed that all these people who are living violent lives, and, and you understand, when people are violent, when people are deadly, and when people are dangerous, and when people are, are in strife, and when people could do anything, they could kill, they could do anything, you know, it takes courage for you at that same time to say what you're doing will bring judgment occultism it will bring judgment violence fighting it will bring judgment oppressing other people it will bring judgment acting as if life is not having any value it will bring judgment and that's exactly what Enoch did he not he didn't just live a righteous life a worthless righteous life a silent or a righteous life a righteous life that I will keep myself I'll not do anything or say anything they are bad people I don't want them to cut my life short that not Enoch he lived a life that was active a life that was uh, that proclaimed the word of God a life that was courageous and he said the Lord is coming and he's coming with ten thousands of his saints and he will execute judgment upon all understand understand the depth of revelation that Enoch had you understand that Enoch in chapter 5 he was the only one that lived such an extraordinary life that he was translated not to see death and then in chapter 6 of Genesis the flood came and only eight people were saved only eight people were in there but Enoch said the time is coming there'll be saves there'll be righteous people there will be godly people and they will be in their thousands, ten thousands of his saints. They will be innumerable, uncountable. And he says, but even in the midst of that, when he comes with ten thousands of his saints, there are going to be people who are ungodly. There are going to be people who are righteous. There are going to be people who are faithful. And the Lord is going to judge them. He's going to execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them. Of all their ungodly deeds. Which they have ungodly spoken. And they have ungodly committed all those sins. And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have uh, uh, spoken against him. And he says in verse 16, uh, this uh, Jude now talking to us, he says, these are the murmurers and the, compla and the complainers, and these are the people walking in uh, after their own laws, and their mouths speak at great swelling walls of vanity, uh, uh, having men's uh, uh, persons, in admiration because of advantage well we have learned from Enoch that if we're going to make the rapture and thank God we will make it in Jesus name you will make it in Jesus name there will be phase number one 
there will be faithfulness number two there will be fearlessness in number three if you have the disease of fear, fearing the fear of man in your office you know that's not right you cannot say no because of what you will do in your community you know this is not right but you don't want to get into their bad book you are fearful in your extended family everything they say yes 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 ma yes sir yes uncle yes everybody there is fear in your life you cannot take a stand the church does not know where you stand your family does not know where you stand your community does not know where you stand your extended family does not know where you stand in the olden days in the good old days we knew where you stood but now because you are getting older we cannot tell where you stand because now there is fear that has taken the place of faith in your life well enoch made that rapture because he had not the fear of man fear of society fear of what are we going to eat fear of if the people don't do this and that am i going to survive you need to have that fear if we're going to make the rapture number one there must be faith number two there must be faithfulness number three there will be fearlessness so come to number two now and this is the liberating restoring and walking courageously by his grace i want you to look at second kings chapter two in second kings chapter two we're looking at verse one second kings chapter two verse one and it came to pass when the lord will take up elijah into heaven that's the rapture when the rapture happens the lord will take those who have been saved and those who are living uncompromising lives and those who are able to stand they're able to stand against the jezebel of the day against the ahab of the day and they're able to live an uncompromising life in the sight of the people that control the age and control the moment and yet they're able to say no to that no to that in fact he have called uh, elijah his enemy and he did he wasn't afraid of that kind of language as thou found me O my enemy the people who are going to make it at the time of the rapture they'll be like elijah it came to pass when the lord will take elijah into heaven when the rapture happens the lord is going to take his church into heaven and it says by one wind that elijah went with elisha from gilgal look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says and the sons of the prophets that were in bethlehem came in bethel they came forth to elisha and they said unto him knowest thou that the lord will take away knowest thou that the lord will take away thy master from thy head today you see the people who are going to make the rapture they are not hidden believers that people will not know whether they will make it or they will not make it if there is doubt in the lives of people the way this uh, so-called sister is living can she make the rapture and the way this so-called brother is living and the way she said uh, is dubious and the way you cannot tie him down pin him down you cannot hold down to his word and uh, you know he tells you something now you might find that's a lie later uh, i'm concerned with this person will this person make the rapture the people who are going to make the rapture are the people people can tell they're different and people can tell these are the people the people of god 
Lord. They don't say no when they ought to say yes. They don't say yes when they ought to say no. Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from your head today? Look at verse 5. In verse 5, when he came again to this, to this place at Jericho, the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? Look at that. These people had the knowledge that Elijah was going and they didn't have the idea. They didn't have the passion. They didn't have the desire. If this man has so pleased God and has so done the work of God that the Lord knows that he has done everything I assigned for him to do and it is time to come home and the Lord is going to spend sin the special chariots to take him away if a man can be like this i want to be like that you know the toys with revelation the pledge with revelation the jokes with revelation the toss revelation here and there do you know the lord is going to take thy master from thy head today are there people like that in our church they know about the rapture they can quote the verses of the rapture and they can tell us the rapture is going to happen anytime and they can tell their neighbors you know i believe in the rapture and i believe jesus is coming he'll come anytime from now but they're not acting like they really believe that they're not living like they really believe that during the day in their interaction with people around them they're not acting like they really believe that the rapture will take place anytime don't be like that don't be like these sons of the prophets that said do you know the rapture is going to take place and elijah is going today look at verse 9 in verse 9 it came to pass when they were gone over that is gone over uh, the river uh, Jordan and it says Elijah said uh, unto Elisha ask what I shall do for thee look at this before I be taken away from thee before I be taken away from thee not only that other people knew not only that other people thought that elijah will be taken away you know there are people that live such a life that you never detect how their real life is their inner life their spiritual life their hidden life you cannot really tell and you might think they're saved they're sanctified and they're holy and they, they can point to them he will make the rapture if nobody makes the rapture he will make the rapture but he himself in his heart is saying huh, this is a thing i'm harboring in my heart when the lord comes am i sure i'm going to make the rapture there are people that will say as i'm playing my game and I'm able to deceive almost everybody. And everybody thinks I am Mr. Holiness. Everybody thinks I am Madam Holiness. They think like that. Am I sure inside me I'm going to make it? Elijah was sure. Elijah was sure. Elijah said, ask whatever you want before I be taken away from you. Live your life in such a way that you have the witness of the spirit within you that according to the word of god you are transparently righteous you are transparently holy that you yourself will know should the rapture take place today i know i will go i pray and life will be that transparent in jesus name we're looking at verse 11 now in verse 11 it says and it came to pass as they as they uh, went on uh, and it says that now by the grace of god the chariot came from heaven and it took elijah into heaven took him up by wild wind uh, into heaven into heaven emphasize that in your mind that is what it means when the rapture takes place the lord will come he'll take us into heaven looking at the case of elijah and looking at what the lord did for elijah what do we learn 
as to how we're going to be ready number one an excellent spirit for purity transformed by grace an excellent spirit transformed by grace i want to remind you of the time elijah lived it was a bad time it was a corrupt time it was a corrupting time it was a defiling time that he lived there were so many false prophets and there were so many prophets of Baal in the land and then there was a, a bad king an evil king a righteous king that is Ahab and the wife was even more defiled that's a Jezebel and all those people they were aggressive and they were violent but you know Elijah Elijah knew I came into this world all alone by myself and when I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave all alone by myself and I want to please God, I want to serve God. That's what he did. If you're going to make it in the rapture, you're not going to say the world is bad now. And if you are not following after them, you are going to lose their uh, kind of appreciation. And you will not get anything out of this life. And then you don't need to know how to behave because Ahab can be deadly, can be dangerous. If you don't know how to play your game, you can get into trouble. And Jezebel is no better either. If you are going to live in this world and you are going to at least have some things to help you yourself and feed yourself you must know how to behave because of Jezebel it wasn't like that he said I'm going to please God whoever is pleased whoever is not pleased that's their own decision that's their own opinion I am going to live to please the Lord that's what it takes if we're going to make it in the rapture there are three things we're looking at an excellent spirit with purity a transformed by grace number two an extraordinary spirit and power turning others to righteousness number three an expressive spirit and perception of translation to glory an expressive spirit and perception with translation to glory number one an excellent spirit with purity transformed by grace look at um, look at uh, first kings chapter 17 from verse 2 first kings chapter 17 verse 2 and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, in verse 3, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook cherries that is before Jordan. Look at verse 4. It says, And it came to pass, and it shall be, that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Verse 5 says, so he went. So he went. I can't understand how ravens that are ravenous will feed me every day. But so he went. I don't understand how I'll go to the brookside. And then there's no kitchen there. There's no cook there. And there is no shop there, no grocery there. But so he went. The people that do not question the word of God. The people that do not say, I don't understand how this will take place. This is unreasonable. And this is not historical. I've never heard anything happening like this before. How can a person live a peculiar life like this? How can God give a commandment like this? The people that do not question God and the people that do not question the word of God and the people that do according to the word of the Lord, those are the people like Elijah that will make it at the time of the rapture. It is not just knowing, uh, I know the rapture will take place. It's not just believing, uh, I know the rapture will take place. A life of obedience that will not turn the word like this and turn the word of God like that, that will not give any excuse for disobeying the Lord. I don't understand, so I cannot practice that. 
I don't agree, so I will not practice that. How can God say something like that? And how can God, uh, you know, say something like this and not give me explanation? The people who are waiting for explanation that will never come. They are the people who will miss the rapture. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and then he dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. The people who are obedient to the word of the Lord, those are the people, they have an excellent spirit and they have purity of heart in First John chapter 3 from verse 1. First John chapter 3, reading from verse 1, is now coming to the new covenant, the believers, those people who the rapture really is meant for, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. We should be called the sons of God. The world will not call us sons of God, but God himself said, "Ye shall be my son and ye shall be my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And Christ says, as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even those who believe in his name and those who have believed in his name and their lives have been transformed. They are now called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. The world knoweth us not the world knoweth us not if the world approves of every step you take if the world approves of every action you take if the world you know the world those who are not born again those who are not children of god those who are not following the lord if the world if they're saying congrats wonderful we like the way you practice your own christianity you're not like those people that do not hear the world they do not know any other that thing is going on in the world heaven 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 is only what they are talking about they're so heavenly minded they have no earthly use and they don't think about they don't join us and join us there the people that the world knows not those are the people that will get to heaven let me ask you a question do you have more people in the world appreciating you than you have in the church the people who you see, they really know your value and they know your worth and they more in the world and then the people in the church, they know nothing about you. Are you the good person to the, to the people of the world and then the church of the living God, they're praying for you and they're saying, oh, when will this person turn and when will this person really begin the journey to heaven that will make him that will make her a real child of God if you are going to make it in the rapture the world knoweth us not because it knew him not look at verse 2 in verse 2 it tells us beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear that's the rapture when he shall appear he appears in the clouds and then he calls us his magnetic power will then take us and magnetize us out of the world when he shall appear we shall see him and we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is look at the purity it requires in verse 3 it says and every man that has this hope the hope of the rapture every man every woman every member of the church every minister in the church that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure even as he is pure does your life compare with the life of christ does your purity compare with the purity of christ does your righteousness compare with the righteousness of Christ? Does your holiness compare with the holiness of Christ? Or are you just managing? Are you just patching? You are the periphery. You are the circumference. You are not really at the center. But you are almost outside. One leg outside. One leg inside. I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. Nobody can be as pure as Christ. Nobody can be as pure as Enoch. 
Nobody can be as holy as Daniel. I'm just uh, trying my best. Why don't you have the grace? The grace of God comes into our lives and our sins are pardoned. And our sins are washed away. And even the inward sin, the depravity, all that is taken away. And then he purifies us through the blood of the Lamb. Even as he is pure. That's what it takes to make the rapture an excellent spirit and purity transformed by his grace. Number two, an extraordinary spirit and power turning others to God. Turning others to God. You know the story. It's in First Kings chapter 18. How he came, that is the, how, how, how this man, Elijah came and said, how long will you hold between two opinions? That man was forthright. That man was direct. That man was not using diplomacy in preaching the word of God. He wasn't using worldly politics to present the word of God. He told them straight, how long are you going to stand between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal, then serve him. And then he gave them the test of who God is, the one that answers by fire. And then he prayed. And when he prayed, the fire came down. And the people said, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. He turned them to God. And we're told in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, we're reading from verse 16. is saying that, John the Baptist will come in the spirit and the power of Elijah and what will he do? What will be the characteristic of the person like Elijah and like John? They will turn many unto righteousness. Let me ask you, does your life turn anyone to righteousness? Does your behavior, your character bring conviction on anybody and say, why am I living the way I'm living? The way I see this brother, the way I see this sister, I have the desire to be holier. I have the desire to be purer. I have the desire to turn more onto righteousness. Your husband, does your life encourage your wife to become more righteous? Does your life encourage your children to become purer? And you are a worker in the office. Does your life and your commitment and your faithfulness and your fearlessness, does it encourage other people and turn them to righteousness? You are a member of the church, a member of the house fellowship, a member in that local church. The way you live and the way you talk, does your life, not to talk of ministry and not to talk of preaching yet, but your life does it turn other people unto righteousness but you know in the case of Elijah he had an extraordinary spirit and power turning others to righteousness and we're told about John in Luke chapter 1 verse 16 and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God Many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God. Now understand, uh, there are people who say they are children of God. They say they are workers. They say they are leaders. They don't have any sinner. They have turned to the Lord. I know you counsel. I know you touch other people's lives. I know you help other people. I know you encourage other people. But you know... All the people you're encouraging, they're the people others have turned to the Lord. Others have brought to the Lord. All the people you see, you are, you know, he leading, you're helping. They're people that others have brought to the Lord. Have you yourself, by your life, by your testimony, by your preaching, by your, by your ministry, have you turned anyone unto the Lord? But you know, as we look at Elijah and how he made the rapture, here is the quality that we see in his life. 
many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And in verse 17, in verse 17, it tells us very well that he shall go before him, that is before the Lord, in the spirit and in the power of Elias. In the spirit and the power of Elias. Know that those two things are joined together, the spirit and the power. Somebody says, I have the spirit of God. Where is the power? I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. Where is the power? I speak in tongues. Where is the power? I'm filled, I'm saturated with the Spirit of God. Where is the power? The evidence of the Spirit, that extraordinary Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Ghost is power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. It shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Then it says to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the, ch and the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The disobedient to the wisdom of the just. You see, you are a leader. There are people who are disobedient and you have never influenced them to turn away from their disobedience unto the just life, the wisdom of the just. What kind of a leader are you? And what kind of minister are you? You don't have the wisdom to turn them from disobedience. You don't have the courage to turn them from disobedience. You are even afraid of them. They are higher. The disobedient are higher than you are. And you cannot influence them in the right direction. The people who are going to make the rapture are the people, number one, on their own. They're purified by the transformation of the grace of God in their lives. Number two, they have the power to turn other people. Their lives will turn other people. Their preaching will turn other people. Their disposition will turn other people. And their influence will turn other people from disobedience obedience to the to the wisdom of the just and to make ready to make ready a people prepared for the lord those are the people who are getting ready for the rapture they make other people ready for the coming of the lord number three here is an expressive spirit and perception of translation to glory of translation to glory he knew he had the perception he had the understanding he had the enlightenment. He knew from the depth of his heart he was going to be raptured. He was going to be taken away. Apart from the fact that other people knew, he himself knew and he expressed it, asked what I will do for you before I be taken away from you. And then we who are children of God, we're not in ignorance, even though we don't know the day, we don't know the time when the Lord will come, but we know that he is coming. We have the perception and we're living in that understanding and we're living in that perception. We're living in that understanding. We're living in that knowledge. We're living in that consciousness that the Lord will come at any time and we know it's sooner than later. We know he is coming and the coming is not going to be prolonged any time. When you see these things, you know that the time draws near. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 4. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 4, but ye brethren are not in darkness. You have enlightenment. Ye be brethren are not in darkness. You have the perception. Ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. In verse 5, it tells us, Ye are all children of light 
If you're children of light, the light is shining in all the circumstances around you. If you're children of light, the light is shining in a, and it's shining across your pathway. And you have the proper perception. It says here, all the children of light and the children of the day were not of the night nor of darkness. And then in verse 5, verse 6 rather, in verse 6, therefore, let us not sleep as do others let us not sleep and become unconscious as do others let us not sleep and become forgetful as others do let us not sleep and then forget everything forget the day forget the date forget the previous forget the coming the future forget even where we are when we are asleep we are maybe you're having a dream of something that is unreal or fantasy let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober you know christ is coming let us watch and be sober are you enlightened about the rapture let us watch and be sober and are you do you know that it is sooner than later let us watch and be sober do you have perception that the lord is coming he'll get here anytime from now and take the saints away let us watch and be sober if you are not watchful, that's the opposite. If you are frivolous, if you are superficial, if you are here and there, and you scatter your energy, you are not a serious person, you are not a focused person, you are not a prepared person, you are not sober. It says because we know and we have the perception that Christ is coming, let us watch and be sober. In verse 7, it tells us in verse 7, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that, uh, they that be drunk in, uh, are drunk in, uh, in the night. Don't be drunk with a self-opinionated idea. And don't be drunk in uh, with a particular thing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. All your excitement is you are excited about things outside. But you are not ready for the coming of the Lord. It says they that be drunk in, are drunk in, in the night. Then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, is, but let us who of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love, and as for an element, the hope of salvation. Look at verse 9. It says in verse 9, for, but God, for God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's come to point three now. In point three, we're looking at this part, looking responsibly and witnessing compassionately with the gospel. We're looking responsibly and we're witnessing compassionately with the gospel. It tells us in Acts chapter 1 reading from verse 8 acts chapter 1 verse 8 but he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth unto the uttermost part of the earth is telling us that witnessing soul winning addressing souls into the kingdom is not only to be at jerusalem and it's not only, not only to be at in judea not only in samaria anywhere we are in the world the uttermost part of the earth you're in a village uttermost part of the earth he wants us to witness he wants us to preach the real gospel not a mutilated gospel the word of god is the same salvation whether you got saved in jerusalem whether you got saved at the headquarters or you got saved in the village in the uttermost part of the earth salvation is salvation sanctification is sanctification holy ghost baptism is holy ghost baptism 
doctrine is doctrine. The Bible remains the same. And the purity we ought to have, transparent purity and power, they remain the same whether you're in the village, in the faraway place, or you are at the headquarters. You cannot say, well, uh, because we're at the uttermost part of the earth, our experiences cannot be the same as those in Jerusalem. And they were told in verse 9, this is how the Lord Jesus was taken away from the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Was seen Enoch, was seen Elijah. Now we see the Lord Jesus Christ, he was taken up and received up out of their sight in verse 10 we're told where it was taken to and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven that's where he went as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel and they were told in verse 11 it says which said also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven, looking up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, look at this, into heaven, into heaven. That's what takes place. And it, when the rapture takes place, we'll be taken out of this earth, we'll be taken up into heaven. It shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. As you have seen him go into heaven. And now we're looking up. And we're looking up in a responsible manner. In a responsible way. In Titus chapter 2. We're reading from verse 13. Titus chapter 2. We're reading from verse 13. It says looking for that blessed hope. You have to be eager. You have to be expectant. You have to look. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What will happen before we can be taken up as we're looking up, looking for the glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 14. In verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. That's what it takes to make the rapture, that will benefit from what Christ has done, that he has given the sacrifice to redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people, not a commonplace people, not a slave of the society, not a football that everybody said you can kick here and there peculiar, uncommon, and standing, and standing firm. Those are the people that will make it on that day. They are purified, peculiar people, zealous of good works. But looking at three things, say number one is the exclusive promise of the rapture for the saints exclusive promise is exclusive to the saints of God it doesn't include sinners and worldly people only for the saints of God number two the exact pattern of rapture from the scriptures the exact pattern of the rapture from the scriptures number three the experiential preparation for the rapture with steadfastness. Number one, the exclusive promise. This is given peculiarly, exclusively to the saints of God. John chapter 14, reading from verse 1. In John 14 verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Wars and rumors of wars, let not your heart be troubled. False prophets rising up, let not your heart be troubled. 
children be trained, their parents. Let not your heart be troubled. Commotion, confusion all over the world. Let not your heart be troubled. We don't know what will come tomorrow, what is happening around us. Let not your heart be troubled. Deceivers and uh, who are being deceived and they have come, they are coming into the church. They are deceivers and they are working for the Antichrist all the same. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In verse 2, it says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you everything I told you is the absolute truth, is the gospel truth. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. As I'm going, I go to heaven, I'm received up into heaven, but I'll be thinking of you, I'll be planning for you, I'll be preparing a place for you. And then in verse 3, he says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. That's the rapture, and receive you. When he comes at the second coming, he comes of the saints and is not going to receive the believers. He has received them already at the time of the rapture and is coming now to rule and to reign and to set up his kingdom in the world. That's at the beginning of the second coming. But this time now, the rapture, and receive you unto myself. He'll be in the air, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and then he will receive the believers unto himself. That where I am, there ye may be also. That's the reason we're looking forward to that time. And it will happen anytime. Number two, the exact pattern of the rapture from the scriptures. Exact pattern. We've seen that of Enoch. We've seen that of Elijah. Now we'll see that of Christ Jesus our Lord. Look at Mark chapter 16 verse 19. Mark Chapter 16, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. He was received up into heaven. That's the pattern. He will receive us. I come and I will receive you unto myself. Received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Look at Luke chapter 24. In Luke chapter 24, verse 51, is talking about the pattern, how it will be when it comes to our turn, when it comes to your turn. I said, when it comes to your turn. Look at it in Luke chapter 24, verse 51. And it came to pass, it shall come to pass. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. That's the pattern, and carried up into heaven. It will change us, it will transform us, and then our bodies that are glued to the earth now, because of the force of gravity, that, that force of gravity will be loosened, and then it will take us up into heaven heaven you see that pattern into heaven into heaven and then acts chapter 1 we're reading from verse 9 acts chapter 1 reading from verse 9 it says and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up are you noticing the words in mark he was received up into heaven in Luke, he was carried up into heaven, and now in Acts, he's taken up 
into heaven and a cloud received him out of their sight and then in verse 10 and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel they were told in verse 11 which said, which also said ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven he will come he will receive you too as you have seen him go into heaven in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 Philippians chapter 3 we're reading here from verse 20 it says for our conversation is in heaven our expectation is in heaven our focus our, uh, our expectation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior from heaven is coming and we're looking for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ then in verse 21 in verse 21 who shall change our vile body who shall change our weak body who shall change our body that is controlled and pulled down by the force of gravity it will change a foul body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body what was his glorious body like after he rose from the dead and the doors were closed and then he went into them and said peace be unto thee when all the doors are locked maybe you have slept in the night and you have locked all your doors our bodies are fashioned like unto his glorious body and the rapture takes place through that closed door and through the roof up there you will go and then the roof will not stop you the closed door will not stop you because we're fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the walking whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself the experiential preparation for the rapture was steadfastness now that we know that the Lord is coming he wants us to be prepared and our preparation is to be with steadfastness that you are ready yesterday that's not enough for today you must be ready today you must be ready tomorrow and ready every time in second peter chapter 3 verse 17 second peter chapter 3 verse 17 ye therefore beloved seen seeing uh, that she knew these things all that we have learned today seeing that she knew these things before beware lest she also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness there are people who say once you are saved you are forever saved once you are saved everybody will go in the rapture once you are saved or oh, just just know that you are saved wherever you are whatever you are doing whatever your life is even if you go back into error and you follow false prophets and you are working for false prophets and you are working for the world and you are working for the deceivers it doesn't matter once you are saved rapture is going to take place you'll be there he says ye therefore beloved seen ye know these things before beware lest ye also other people have been deceived other people have gone astray other people have fallen some people some of them have not come back yet it says beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked the wicked people have error it's not just only their action 
the wicked preachers, the wicked prophets, the wicked religious people, they have a lot of damning, damning errors. And it says uh, you, are, you should be aware, let's you are led away with the error of the wicked and then fall from your own steadfastness and then give up. Well, the, the pressure is too much and give up. The temptations are too many and give up. The trials are too many and give up. The challenges of the day are too many and then you give up and you fall from your own steadfastness. Fastness, I pray you will not fall. None of us will fall in Jesus' name. It tells us in verse 18. In verse 18, uh, but grow in grace. Keep on growing. Are you saved? Keep on growing. Are you sanctified? Keep on growing. Are you a believer? And you have seen many people come into the kingdom of God. Don't relax and then uh, sit back and say, I've done enough. I've turned many people to righteousness. Keep on growing. Grow in the work of God. Grow in your, in your life, in your lifestyle. And grow in your dedication. And grow in everything you do. And grow in righteousness and godliness. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to whom be glory both now and forever Amen the Lord have the glory in your life and the Lord will make you to grow in Jesus name and the Lord wake you up and the Lord make you steadfast that when the Lord shall come you will go in Jesus name all temptations over, all trials over, all oppression over, all sickness over, all sorrow over. You come to the other side, there will be no night there, there will be no sorrow there, there will be no hunger there, there will be no thirst there, there will be no oppression there. You go to the other side and evil is forgotten forever, suffering is forgotten forever, oppression is forgotten forever, tears are forgotten forever. Forever. I pray that day you will not miss that day in Jesus name be steadfast then until Christ will come might come tonight be steadfast might come tomorrow be steadfast might come anytime remain in your uncompromising stand and steadfastness and that glorious day will not meet any of us unprepared in Jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer that the Lord himself will write the word on the tables of our heart and we will be ready, we will be prepared and when the Lord will come, none of us will be taken unawares in Jesus' name.